Something being open world doesn't automatically make it good, and I think that's an important thing to remember. While an explorable open world can often sound enticing, the execution of said world is probably what's most important. What incentive is there to explore it? What variety of things are it filled with? And how fun is it to traverse? Yes, there are other things that make an open world good, but for me, these are the main three things that I tend to look for. The incentive to explore the world is an important first step for these games. In almost all cases, the basic reason to want to explore is either because of objectives like a marker on a map, or because you want to level up your character and become stronger. The hope though is that those other two points come into effect, and that drive for exploration evolves into you exploring simply because you enjoy doing it. You want to find those shrines, overcome those enemy camps, and you want to see what the world has to offer. With all this in mind, how well does Elden Ring accomplish this? It wouldn't have been surprising if it wasn't executed perfectly, given the previous Soulsborne games were going for a more linear approach with their gameplay. And even if Elden Ring was going to use a lot of the pre-established ideas from those games, it was bound to feel different. But is it different good, or different bad? Who am I kidding, we all know this game turned out to be phenomenal, people love it, me included. For me, all of these boxes were checked. I think the open world this game has to offer is something incredible. So, let's talk about why. Before anything, the question has to be asked, why even make a Soulsborne game open world? The previous games were critically acclaimed, with an already massive fanbase who had come to love these games with their linearity being a factor in that. Well, the intention with Elden Ring was never to outright remove linear progression. In fact, it's still largely featured in a whole lot of areas. Most notably would be within the catacombs and such you find scattered across the world, and also in the fairly substantial legacy dungeons. The addition of the open world was instead added as something to explore in between all of the game's points of interest. But even then, the previous Soulsborne games didn't need an open world for them to be good, so why was there the addition of an open world for Elden Ring? It isn't the most straightforward question to answer, and I think there's more than one reason that the jump to open world was made, and here's what I think might be the first reason. Just think about it, what is the biggest point of contention with the Soulsborne games? The difficulty. Even if you enjoy how tough these games can be, it doesn't change the fact that them being too hard is the topic of discussion every single time a new one is released. But that difficulty is a core part of the series, so how can you keep that difficulty but also make it easier at the same time? I know that sentence sounds stupid, just bear with me. Spirit Summoning was a step towards this goal, since it's an optional mechanic that makes bosses easier for newer players and can be ignored by the experienced players who want a more traditional Soulsborne experience. But I also think that the decision to make the game open world played a big part in making the game more accessible to newcomers. The thing about open world games is that they're essentially made to be taken at your own pace. There may be an objective, but there's no real rush to go there most of the time, so you're free to do what you want. So when you encounter a boss in Elden Ring that you may be struggling with, you're presented with multiple options. You could choose option 1, you feel like you can take on this boss, you just need a few more tries to get to that point. But option 2 will always be there. And that option is… turn around, flee, leave, whatever word you want to use, you get my point. And you aren't giving up, you're just putting a pin in it. Because likely you're going to return to this fight later once you've gotten stronger and or better at the game both of which come naturally from just exploring the world around you. Killing enemies, finding items, exploring caves, etc. You know, in some ways, I see the open world as being a bit of a training ground. Because, like I said, you're not just getting better loot, you'll also simply be improving at the game through your exploration. I don't think dying to a boss over and over again when you're not even used to the basic mechanics of a game is very intuitive. How are you meant to improve if you don't understand what you're doing wrong? It's much easier to get a grasp on how the game is meant to be played with lower intensity enemies that still demand effort but won't kill you so soon that you don't learn from your mistakes. And my point is that I think this is only enhanced with an open world design for the reasons I was mentioning. At times, it can feel like you're outright encouraged to give encounters a break. And you shouldn't feel bad for doing so because there's almost always going to be new places to explore and new encounters to experience. And that all feeds into making the game more accessible to players thanks to them being able to take the game at their own pace. But all of that is just one reason I think FromSoft gave Elden Ring an open world. And like I mentioned, there is another reason that I think they went in this direction. A 
huge appeal of open world games is discovering landmarks or places in a more natural way than you would with a linear game. Because rather than following a designated path and then looking for secrets while on that path, you instead have to somewhat forge your own route if you're trying to see all that can be seen. And that freedom you're given I think elevates the exploration and helps add a greater sense of discovery for when you do find those new things. I'd say a lot of that comes from how much easier it is to miss enemies, items, even entire locations, and they're easier to miss because of the nature of how an open world is structured. It's obvious why some wouldn't like this, since it makes sense that you'd want to see everything the world has to offer, right? Well, you would be right, but making it so easy to miss things is what makes finding the things that you do find so much more impactful. How cool is it to find a really secluded village that you just know tons of people missed? And same goes for finding a cool unique weapon or an armor set you could have easily brushed over. It's so easy to miss amazing things like this because of just how much choice you have on where you want to go, and because there's so much space to explore should you want to find everything. I'm sure anyone who stumbled upon Siofra River knows exactly what I'm talking about. Because even though this example isn't in some super obscure place, with how big the map is it's so easy to miss amazing things like this. I know that in my first playthrough of the game, there were entire sections of the map that I completely glossed over, and I only got to explore them in the post-game. And speaking of things that are missable, my favorite things to find had to be the boss fights that felt like they could've belonged in the main campaign, but instead were kept optional to make them feel more special for if you happened to stumble upon them. Some of these were surprisingly easy to miss, at least in my experience, since I didn't find them all on my first playthrough, but no complaints on missing them for the reasons I was talking about. All of this content being so missable isn't just the result of the map design though, it's also thanks to something that almost immediately becomes apparent once you start the game, and that would be that this game takes pride in being a lot less… hand-holdy as I'll call it, at least when compared to other open world games. There's no quest log, no pinpoint telling you where your next destination is, instead the closest thing you'll get to that is through NPC dialogue that at times won't be repeated, or through the guidance of grace mechanic. And even then, all you're being given is a vague inclination on what direction you should go to progress the story. I think this approach to giving a player their objectives through more natural means is really good. I know it sounds like something that might get in the way more often than not, but it's pretty refreshing not having a marker telling you exactly where you're meant to be going, especially in a world like this. It's unnecessary. Being given a general direction on where to go, rather than a specific point to reach, feels much more fitting in an open world environment. At least in my opinion. Originally when I was making this script, I was planning for this part of the video to be me going over some of the small critiques I have with the open world. Only, I came to realize I didn't actually have many. The main one that came to mind for me was to do with certain NPC questlines and how some of them can be quite hard to complete if you accidentally explore the map outside of the intended order. In other words, maybe the game is hoping for you to explore the map like this, and so the NPC is placed in certain spots accordingly. But my point is that in an open world design, it's very easy to deviate from a predicted path. And so if you find yourself in a scenario like this one, then suddenly the storyline becomes much harder to progress because you likely have no reason to naturally want to return to the areas that the game is expecting you to travel to next. I still think this is fair criticism for some of the NPC quest lines, but honestly, I think that most of them were handled pretty well and so long as I was thorough with my exploration, I was able to complete a decent number of them. Besides, I came to the conclusion that I was being unrealistic in wanting to complete every single storyline within a single playthrough. I don't think that was ever the intention. Also with time, their vague and sometimes hard to follow nature is something I've actually come to appreciate. So instead of the NPC storylines, I tried to think of other critiques for the open world. One thing that came to mind is how it's possible to accidentally overlevel yourself and make certain areas of the game much easier than they're meant to be. Though I'm hesitant to call this an issue with Elden Ring itself, since this same thing is present in just about any open world game that has some kind of level up system. It's an unfortunate byproduct of the genre. Another supposed criticism I thought of would be that I didn't find New Game Plus all that enticing, but that never felt like a big problem to me since if I wanted to replay the game, I found that making a new character helped keep the experience fun. You know, when I think about it, I just don't have many problems with the open world. And that's not to say I'm not aware of other people's criticisms with it, it's just that I barely had any issues with a lot of the points that get brought up. Because, yeah, overall I really liked this take on the open world formula. The amount of work and care that was poured into making this world and all of what it contains really shows. Still, it's not going to be everyone's favourite. Without a doubt there's going to be people out there who prefer the structure of the other Soulsborne games. 
But all that I know is that I thought this game was amazing. And the open world played a big part in what made me like it so much. So that's why I decided to make a video dedicated to talking about why I liked it as much as I did. But with that, I've said just about all I wanted to say. So feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.